Hello everyone. Before we start on today's lecture, let me answer some of your questions from last week's lecture. There are also a handful of you who have not looked at last week's lecture, so please look at that first before you look at this week's lecture. Alright, so here are some of the questions that you all had. Uh, first question, how long will erosion need to take place for before farmers decide that it is necessary to move to another plot? Uh, just a quick recap. So recall that the top soil, which is the top layer of the soil, is the layer with most nutrients for plants to grow. And it's also the first layer to be eroded simply because it's at the top. So when the water or the wind blows, it will erode the top layer first. Okay, and that is why erosion, especially of the top soil, is a very key problem. Because when the top soil is eroded, the nutrients will also be eroded away. So farmers may move to another plot of land once their land loses fertility due to the erosion of most of the topsoil. This then perpetuates the cycle of deforestation. Um, next question. Rocks contain nutrients, is it? That's why weathered rocks release nutrients into the soil. Uh, short answer is yes. So weathered rocks are rocks that are broken down into smaller particles. If you look at the soil, inside the soil there are many rocks. So over time the rocks may be weathered and broken down. And this process releases nutrients such as magnesium and potassium which are required by plants. So rocks through weathering also contribute nutrients which can be used by plants. Okay, another question. Does the decay of animals also count as nutrients for plants? Answer is yes. So both dead plants and dead animals will be decomposed uh, by decomposers like bacteria, fungi and earthworms. And from this process of decomposition, the dead plants and animals will then be recycled into chemical nutrients such as carbon and nitrogen which are then released back into the soil, the air or water. So if you look at the nutrient cycle, uh, biomass includes all the living things including plants and animals. So when plants and animals die, they then contribute uh, to the litter right? and as the litter decomposes, nutrients will then be released into the soil. So animals are also part of the biomass. And therefore, they also contribute to the litter and subsequently to the nutrients in the soil. Okay, another question. What is soil leaching? So, leaching is a process which occurs when water flowing vertically through the soil transports dissolved nutrients downwards. So, water flowing vertically through the soil. In this process, nutrients are dissolved in the water and transported downwards and usually these nutrients are transported away from the roots of trees and plants such that the nutrients cannot be used by the plants anymore because it's transported away. So it's, it's transported downwards away from the roots of trees and plants. And that's why it's a process where nutrients are lost from the nutrient cycle. Okay, so I repeat again, it's the vertical downward movement of water through the soil. So water can flow through the soil. In the process, it dissolves nutrients and brings the nutrients downwards away from the roots of plants. And therefore, these nutrients cannot be used by the plants anymore. Uh, leaching is a big problem in tropical forests because many of the trees in tropical forests tend to have shallow roots. Uh, if you recall from last week's lecture, we learned that the top soil, the layer of the soil with the most nutrients, is a very thin layer in tropical forests because there are many, many plants, so they take up the nutrients very quickly. So the top soil is a very thin layer. Also, in a lot of tropical forests, there's a lot of rainfall. That's why it's called rainforest. Right? There's a lot of rainfall. Water is also abundant. So there's no need for trees to grow very deep roots. So generally, in tropical forests, the trees have very shallow roots. So if they have very shallow roots, then when leaching happens, it can easily bring the dissolved nutrients away from the roots of the trees and therefore contribute to the loss of nutrients because these nutrients cannot be used by plants anymore. Okay, so if you look at this uh, tree here, this is quite common. I think we see it in Singapore as well. This is what we call the buttress roots. So a lot of the trees in tropical forests are very tall. They're very huge and tall, right? So if they have shallow roots underground, they cannot support the weight of the trees. And that's why the trees in tropical forests often have what we call buttress roots on the surface to support the heavy weight of the trees. But when you go beneath the surface, their roots are actually very shallow. 
Okay, which then explains why leaching is a big problem in tropical forests. Okay, another question. Does leaching only occur when soil erosion happens? Uh, answer is no. Leaching can occur as long as there's water. So as long as there's rainwater that flows into the soil vertically downwards, there will be leaching going on. Okay, but deforestation worsens the problem of leaching because with deforestation, you cut down the trees, you cut down the plants. Uh, less water then is taken in by the plants and therefore more water is available for leaching. Okay, so deforestation would worsen the problem of leaching. Okay, another comment. I don't really understand how the nutrient cycle works. Um, I'm not going to go through it again, right? So you look at it again. If you have more questions, you can come and consult me. But I just want to highlight two key ways deforestation disrupts the nutrient cycle. Uh, so the first way is through the removal of trees. So when you cut down trees, it means that you later on would then have less leaves, less branches, less dead trees, and so on in the litter. Therefore, there's less decomposition going on and less nutrients released from all this plant material into the nutrient cycle. So on the whole, you get less nutrients in the nutrient cycle because you have removed the trees from the forest. Okay, another way in which deforestation disrupts the nutrient cycle is through the loss of nutrients via water. So remember, we said just now, uh, less water will be absorbed by trees since the trees are gone. Right, and therefore, there will be more water available for both processes. First one, more water flowing on the surface as runoff. So more water flowing on the surface. And number two, more water will be available to flow into the soil. So this leads to the loss in nutrients via surface runoff, which is water running on the surface and the process washing nutrients away. And also the loss in nutrients via leaching, which is the vertical downward flow of water, which brings nutrients away from plant roots. Okay, so these are the two key ways in which deforestation disrupts the nutrient cycle. Okay, last question. Uh, is the disruption of nutrient cycle or carbon cycle a greater problem? I think this is a great question. And we'll later on, when we look at 20 mark essays, uh, this is the type of question you should have in your mind, right? Like which impact of deforestation is the most severe, is the most serious? So I'm not going to answer this, right? I think it depends on how you argue, but I'm going to give you some parameters for your argument. So when you want to look at the severity of individual effects of deforestation or any other geographical problem that we learn about, here are some things you can consider, right? So how severe or how serious is this problem to whom? To which group of people will it affect? Right, so to farmers, for instance, maybe the disruption of nutrient cycle will be a huge problem because it will affect their crops and their livelihoods and so on. Okay, other than which group of people we can look at, we should also look at the scale of the impact. Uh, is it a local problem or is it a global problem? Is it a national problem and so on? And of course, lastly, we should look at whether this issue can be resolved. If it can be resolved, then it's not so much of a problem after all. Okay, so I'll leave you with this. And today we are going to look into whether we can try to resolve or manage deforestation in tropical forests.